Today I'll talk about the simplifying structure in Drupal, how we can utilize the single directory component approach. Uh, before looking into the technical stuff, I'll try to introduce myself. So I'm working with Salsa as a technical lead. I have around 14 years of experience and working from India remotely with Salsa. It's been six years and I have done great stuff with Salsa. <coughs> and why I'm talking about the single directory component because I have faced so many issues with <coughs> how to structure your theme. We have seen a multiple design system while working on a Drupal theme like uh, most popular is a pattern labs. There are other design system as well. If you talk about the Australian design system, there were one. And right now, if you saw the civic theme, it's the now most popular one. <coughs> so this is the thing, uh, single directory components are one of the new thing in Drupal 10. So we'll look into this. So before going further, I'll try. Ask Amit to introduce himself first. Hello. Can you guys hear me? So yeah, I'm really excited as well to present here. So I'm Amay Mudras. I'm working from um, in Drupal from past 13 years. And I started from Drupal 6 and now working until Drupal 10 now. And currently working with Salsa Digital from past two and a half years or more. So back to Govind. Thanks, Amay. So we today we have a small agenda. Uh, we'll discuss what exactly the component. I know you all are aware about the components or the design system, but still I'll try to give my best. Uh, the challenges that we face in a, while working on the Drupal development, theme development, um, it totally depends on a front-end development. So uh, you are not interested in any front-end technologies or how you create a new front-end. I think it will not, uh, maybe it's, it's, it's not for you, actually, I would say. <laughs> but yeah, <coughs> I'll... We can explore some benefits of how you can use the SDC. We'll look into the anatomy of the SDC. We'll provide you some example or implementation so you can look out after this. And a quick demo, follow up with the questions answers. So <coughs> first thing, I'll go with the component. So let's start, talk about the component. So if you're going to compose a UI, if you want to uh, build a new, UI in your theme, what exactly, first thing in your mind, how exactly you want to create it. So I would suggest like, if you talk about the this particular layout, if you see in this, you can see some of the text, some of the button, form elements, and the breadcrumb. So anything can be a component. If you talk about the atomic design, we use the smallest element as a component, then we build <coughs> like as a Lego blocks, you can build, uh, connect them together and create a new layout. So in my <coughs> simple terms, a component are self-content unit of code that encapsulate the specifics of functionality or user in element interface. So by using the component, the good thing is you can reuse them anywhere in your project. It doesn't matter how small it is, but it, we want to create a layout or a consistent page with the different set of component, you can use them. So I'm not going into the <laughs> deep in the components because it's a uh, another theory. So <laughs> let's talk about the challenges in Drupal theme. I'm sure you always all you also have some challenge in Drupal theming. What do you think? How it will work? What the first thing you will think about if you're going to uh, create a new theme? How your UI will look like? and what can be a component. So how exactly you can start. So in Drupal frontend challenges, when I came across a few of the things, so all the assets in a theme are scattered across the different folders. If you talk about, if you want to add a new JS, there is a JS folder. If you want to add a Twig template, there could be another folder, or there could be an asset folder where you put your Twig file. And if you want to add a new CSS, you will have to add another CSS file. Then after, you can provide some business logic on top of that. So in Drupal theming, we have a multiple way to create a business logic using the theme. Like there's a pre-process available where you will pre-process all the fields and all. Then you will <coughs> uh, create a new component. 
So it's really challenging in case of how you maintain your Drupal theme because you don't know where exactly your component because it is loading one JS file from another folder, one CSR from some other place. And then you have to define your own library if you want to separate that particular component in a page. So I already discussed this like, so what is single directory component? As the name mentioned, it's a single directory. So if you talk about Drupal module theme, if in a module, module have a single directory where all the functionality is encapsulated in a single. In single directory component, it's first thing is it's in Drupal core. So you don't need a, any additional module if you want to create a single directory component. It's a new way that you can implement components. How you can do it? Just create a new library, a new folder in your theme or in your module, put your template, CSS, JS, no need to define libraries. It will automatically load everything. So this is how the structure will look like of a single directory component. You will have a twig file, CSS file, JS file. It's a, any other assets you want in that component, you can add. So all the dependencies, everything is managed in a single directory only. You don't need to define uh, your JS, your library on any other place. Drupal will automatically recognize what exactly is the component and it will automatically load on the particular page. So <laughs> now look into how this will solve your problem. <laughs> I know I, I talk a bit about the benefits, but still the hooks, the most important thing. If you are in a Drupal themer or developer, you have to be aware about the hooks, how you pre-process your fields, your data. If you want to <coughs> embed your twig file, there could be multiple pre-process that you need to write before looking into uh, what is the final outcome. If you are a, not a Drupal developer, I don't think so. You have context how the fields will render and how you can uh, get all the variables required for your data. So we are trying to organize the front-end development using the single directory component because in single directory component, you don't need to have a good context about Drupal. It's a, as simple as that. You can create your Twig file. If you are a UI developer, you can easily create your Twig file, provide the slot, properties, variables, whatever you want. And all the CSS, you can use the uh, SAS and other things as well. And you can use uh, different like Webpack, anything to build those inside the component only. So it's a new approach. It also <coughs> efficient in loading because uh, as I mentioned, it's a component. So it on demand, whenever you embed this Twig file in a particular page, it will load that component only. It will not uh, load whole JSS or CSS across your Drupal project. So it's a new theming approach and the integration is very simple because it's, you don't need a module, it's in core. So overall, I would say it's provide you the improved performance in your project. If you are using the component based design, if you are already have a design system or something like that, you can uh, create a, your different kind of component inside your module or theme. And if you want to uh, organize your code in a better way, I would suggest SDC will the good thing. Before going further, I'll talk a bit more about the benefits. I, th I know I already talked about them, but still <laughs> there are a few things that uh, these are the few points that you can see on my screen. How you do the organization, how it is provide you the consistency because if you have the coding structure style across all components same and if you want to update any component, you, you just need to look into the single directory. You don't need to look all over the place. Where is my JS? Where is my CSS? Nothing like that. It's <laughs> Modularity, reusable, because it's a component. As I mentioned, in a component-based design, we are nesting, we are <coughs> uh, building blocks, so you can add one component to another component, reuse them across the project. So it also scale in a many way. So if you, if you talk about the atomic design system, you can, you can have atoms, molecules, organs, and the layout. So in the same way, it can scale in an, any way. It's an easy 
to maintain and the other thing is automatic library creation that I mentioned earlier. You don't need to define the library. So how exactly the JS and CSL will load automatic because as DC, it's part of core. So it will automatically recognize and load all the library. So you don't need to define your library again and again in a theme or in a module. It will work. The good thing is it's really easy to find. Just find your, <laughs> find your folder, delete it if you don't want it. You don't need to go into JS, update your code, and clean up. It's it. So um, I'll hand out to Ame to proceed further. And thanks. Thanks, Govind. Thank you for making us understand the benefits of SDC. So let me take you through the technical side of it. And um, let me start with anatomy of the SDC, single directory components. Let me start with the structure. <clears throat> So first things first, we need to create a components. So in order to define a component, you need to create, create a components directory, either in your theme or in your module. This directory holds all your components. So you can have multiple components added. These components can be nested. So, not, so it, it is not needed. It, it, a theme can have multiple components and also nested. So for example, if you want to have atomic design so you have to segregate into atoms molecules etc so you can do that easily then there is something called as a metadata file which is like the heart of a component which defines what exactly your component does what other inputs input it takes and so on so uh, we'll talk about it uh, in the future like in some slides so there are two things which are two files which are really required for a component to be identified by Drupal. First thing is component.yaml. This is the metadata file. And second is the component.twig. This is the file which uh, does like take care of the output. So let's look at the directory structure. So I have taken an example of Olivero theme. I have created, if you see components directory. This component directory now houses like multiple components like banner, button, cards, etc. If you look closely at the structure of cards component, you will see assets which are grouped. Uh, and I have a card.component.yaml. This is the metadata file I was talking about. Uh, then there is a twig file, then there is a CSS file and there is a JS file. So let's look at each of these in detail and understand how to implement a component in case you are using stc for this let's make let's take an example of a card component which we generally use in our pages so this is one of the card components from the salsa digital page i have just uh, taken an example from there so we have an image we have a title and the description as you can see so let's see how we can build this component now Okay, let's talk about the metadata file in detail. So in order to define a component and for Drupal to identify a directory to be a component, you need to define the component.yaml. It needs some basic details like um, schema so for your ID to recognize. It requires your name, like the machine name and the status. So this is the very basic definition of a component. If you see next, you see schema properties. So these are any inputs that you provide to your um, component. So for example, in our case, if you had seen the previous slide, there was an image, title and uh, description. So all of these will be properties. So properties follow JSON schema. If you look closely, we have the type definition. Uh, then we have title, description and some examples as well. So look closely it's it's quite simple to define a component if you like if you see it's it's very easy to define a component in that way next next up there is there are slots slots are also inputs that go into your component but only difference here is that the type of input is not defined so we we take it as a slot and in terms of properties any type like wherein you can define a type 
it can go in as a property where a slot doesn't does not have a fixed type so any html for example can go into your slots and any fixed prop like properties like integer string can go into the properties next up so before going to library override so if you have an asset for example if you have an component so card for example that we have taken the css js files whichever for example card.css and card.js files will automatically get loaded so so if you have used drupal theming you would have generally what you would do is you would define a library and add your js css files in this case you don't have to do it it gets loaded automatically but in case you need more js files or more css files and you need more dependencies in that case you can use something called as library override so this is an example of it next up let's let's see so what what if there is a component which is already present and you need to override it how do you do that so there is a provision for that as well so if you look closely there is a replaces key so in the replaces key you can define you can just add a component name which is already present so so for example if olivero theme is already providing a card component and if you want to override it you can do that okay you just need to put in the theme name and then your component name which you need to override and also fork that particular component and make changes also one more thing to keep note is the schema properties and slots must match so that's the only one thing and and one another thing that i missed out is only themes only components provided by themes can be overridden so yeah that's uh, about the metadata hope you guys have understood the basics but let me uh, let me point you to a example which is there on drupal.org drupal.org provides a detailed example of all the properties which are available so you can see i'm not sure if you can uh, but you can have a look uh, in the future i'll just guide you what exactly this provides so it provides you all the properties which are present for example name statuses and there's a detailed explanation given over here so what exactly is properties and what are, what are slots and how do you add more dependencies so everything has been provided over here so hope i was able to cover the basics of metadata so now let's look at now now that we have defined a metadata how do we like um, use the properties or the slots that we have defined so for that you can use it oh, so okay yeah i'm sharing the correct screen now so now that you have defined the slots and the properties how do you utilize this properties so so for that in the twig file you can make use of the variables like how you can see so the property um, like just like how you use any other variables and the data would be passed on to the twig file so that seems pretty easy right so next up now you have made a um, component so how do you utilize that how do you use this component once you have defined so there are two ways of doing it first one is uh, using twig templates so in your twig, twig templates you can use include command or yeah embed command and just pa pass the name of the component and whatever properties you have defined so you can directly pass those the second method of doing it is just using render arrays just like how you define your forms or just like how you used render arrays from drupal 7 8 so just like use the, just define it as a render array and then uh, you can like render render it later on so hope this is this concept is clear at least the basics are clear and you know how to uh, build a component let's look at the next section which is regarding component libraries module this is just an extension module which is available on drupal.org component libraries generator so what it does is it generates a component for you on the fly and it will ask you multiple questions um, i'll give you a detailed uh, demo on that as well 
okay so this is a third like this is an external module so you can just download this module using sorry you can just download this module and you can use the command drush generate sdc and it will it'll, it'll ask you multiple questions regarding what kind of a component that you are trying to build let's see that in a detailed example okay so yeah i have recorded this video so that i don't i save on time so i have run this drush command as you can see it first asks you your theme name where you want this component to be created so for in my case it is drupal south so d, d south theme is i have created so once i have added it it asks me what is the component name you so i am trying to create a map component here so then it will ask you a series of questions like uh, machine name and what compo what description you want to provide etc what are the uh, library dependencies you want to um, give do you want css along with it or njs files along with it so once this is done it will ask you whether you need properties or not so if you want properties you can say yes then you define properties in our case say for example you want a map title and you want say um, map description and height and width so these are the four things four properties that i'm trying to utilize so it will ask you series of questions regarding uh, what type this uh, property is going to be what is the description etc so here so what we are do doing is adding multiple properties similarly we can also define slots yeah so height as you can see hope this is like um, you, you are able to view it correctly hope is it is like is it too small oh sorry let me try to zoom in otherwise so yeah if this is small maybe you can give it a try it's a very simple module okay if you can just install the module and just run this it's a very basic prompt so let me explain what exactly it will ask you multiple questions what theme it is what descript what prop if you need properties and what details about the properties once you once all this is done you will get details of the um, the newly created component as you can see now let's look at uh, let's look at the component it has cre it has created a component now so as you can see map.component is visible it has added multiple properties that we had mentioned it has defined the type for each of those as you can see and you can you can then utilize this further on and uh, you can like build up on it so this is the map dot twig it has created it has created map css and js files along so it gives you a very good starting point to build up okay so let's look at another example uh, let's see um, a component which is already present in any of the theme any of the themes so i have made use of umami theme which is already uh, like it's present so let's look at the disclaimer how it how it renders so they have defined two proper two properties disclaimer uh, as string and copyright as string and they have also provided an example of how uh, the input should be yes so this is how it looks in like real reality on the page if you see the structure here yeah so this is how it renders let's go back and check how exactly it 
uh, how exactly this is like you uh, called in the first place so if i search for disclaimer it's embedded inside if you see yeah we've used embed command and it's it's used inside the block so which which takes two inputs and finally it renders this component so hope i was like able to give you a starting point um and i could explain you how exactly the component um, is built and how exactly what what exactly sdc is so yeah here are some resources additional resources you can have a look at uh, the first one is the one which i already showed you the annotated example the next one is the components example module which is already there on drupal.org they have explained how exactly a component can be built in detail so you can have a look at that and there are a couple of more examples i have provided as well more resources and if you are interested in like some development work then you can also join hash components channel on drupal slack any q and a any questions please Okay. Thanks for listening. Hey, um, is it possible? I noticed you had on the props uh, example text of how it gets used. Yeah. Is there some way, like say I'm a front end developer okay. and um, I build some component, can I test that component without a Drupal installation? Like I just run some like JavaScript library and just like pop it up without and start it? Without a Drupal like, installation, it'll be slightly difficult. Maybe you mm -hmm. need no. It's it's slightly difficult, I feel, because what happens is um, with Drupal, the the CSS JS file get automatically embedded. So th this happens at runtime. So uh, I'm I'm not sure how you can do it without. Okay, thanks. Uh, but the other part is you might use a storybook to render these kind of components. Yeah, you can use you can use those stuff and you can feel the look, look and feel of the your component. Anyone else? Thanks. Um, you went through the sorry. Uh, you went through the b benefits there, like not necessarily the negatives, but what what are some things uh, that you need to consider, I guess, before making that switch to a you know single design. Before making switch to SDC. Pardon? Sorry, come again. Oh, I didn't sorry. You. I, I, you, I said you went through the benefits there. Um, like, I don't want to, you don't have to like list the negatives, but what, what are some things that you need to take into consideration, uh, you know, before making the switch? To like a single uh, I'm not sure. Majorly, it's, uh, it's for the front end development because, as uh, like Joshua asked about the how exactly you can uh, create a component without using the Drupal. So, this is how you can do it. And then after you can utilize those CSSJS in a uh, Directly in Drupal, you don't need to have the context of Drupal to create just to create a component itself. That's the good part actually. The, I just want to add, uh, can you hear me? I just want to add to this. Um, there are downsides as in like, there are very few, like I can't really uh, think of one at the moment, but, but the thing is, um, once you've structured everything, okay, you'll have to maintain it. So that's the only thing I can say. Thanks guys, great talk. Um, from you. the sounds of it, if it's just been released in Drupal 10.1, this is quite a recent feature. Yes. Um, is there still more work to come or more things that's gonna be released around SDC? Uh, for now, a lot of modules and themes are using it. So um, I'm sure like, there will be advancements, but uh, the, the roadmap currently is to uh, build up on the project side of it like a lot of get get adaptation to it so that's the that's the current roadmap so how this is going to be like uh improved in future so that's something which we'll have to look at but yeah the current roadmap is to get more and more adaptation 
so there have been like talks for multiple modules known modules and themes to use this so as i mentioned you umami already uses it and uh, so there'll be uh, more themes and themes and modules coming up sorry another question um you had uh, php files as uh, one of the files for the component okay um, yeah yeah yes does it does a do you just like does it execute like include it straight away or do you have to put some function for the php file to execute it's, it like it executes it sort of like functions you can use some method like functions basically uh, how does the function get called um I did does not it, explore it. Sorry. Does but, it follow yeah. like does the function follow some like format? You like preprocess like it will match some pattern and it will get. Um, cool. Sorry, I don't have an answer to that. I <laughs> I did not like need a PHP file, uh, but yeah, I'll come back to you on that one. Oh, okay, thanks. The preprocess uh, is not required. Preprocess and hooks don't work. So don't work as in it's like. everything happens before you call a component so once you have called a component it it follows uh, whatever render path is there so real nice talk to talk guys thank you, thank you. um i just oh, i have one question if i'm migrating from the you know like ongoing system 10.0 is there a command for that or a module to do it automatically for me uh, currently no um, themes like whatever components you like there could be render logic everywhere like it in the current context it could be like everywhere uh, there will be hooks there will be pre processes etc so that help that you will have to do it on your own so yeah. but it's fairly simple to migrate like if you are doing it's, it's a different uh, set of front layer you can implement all together not different system even with the drupal 9 you can use a contrib module before it was a contrib module available but in 10.1 it's in core so if you are using the drupal 10.1 or later you can directly use it other than that other if you are in drupal 9 there is a module available so still you can use it on drupal 9 thank you